My name is Levi Woods and I'm an armor smith. Today I'm going to guide you through a little build inspired by the hit HBO series Game of Thrones. I built this helmet over a couple weeks and it's made entirely of steel, brass, and leather. If you don't recognize this helm, it's the Lannister Guard Helm. First I'm going to cut a paper pattern just to get a reasonable size for the helmet. Now I'm using another piece of paper to build the skirt for this helm. Making a paper mock-up always helps when you're doing any sort of build from scratch. If you have another helm lying around, you can always make a paper pattern off of that. But in this case, I was building something different than I had built before, so I thought I would start from scratch and show you guys exactly how I do this. Sometimes it takes a little while to get the paper just right, so I make copies of the pattern as I go along and keep modifying it until I get it just right. The idea of doing a paper helm like that is so that you can get the dimensions of the metal before you cut it and know exactly how much clearance you're going to have around the skirt and around the skull from side to side, front to back. You get a pretty good idea of what it's going to look like. So I basically have squished it down and I'm creating a flat paper pattern. Now I'm going to trace that onto steel. I'm going to cut it out with my metal cutting shears. This helm was cut out of 18 gauge mild steel. Now I'm going to use the Beverly shear to cut this out. You can get a pretty accurate cut with a Beverly shear, so I like to use it for uh, final cuts as well as rough cutting things. It's a pretty quick and effective tool. Now straight on to the hammering. First I work it cold using a two and a half pound sledge. After the sandbag, work it into the steel dishing stake. Now because this is 18 gauge, you can dish it quite a bit before it starts to thin. And this particular armor wasn't intended for real combat. It's just a movie prop. So now I'm going to get out a modified ball peen hammer. I'm just going to continue to dish this cold. It's about as far as I like to take it for as far as stretching goes before I apply some heat. I'm going to quickly cold raise some of the edge just down onto the stake. You can start to see the shape of the helmet coming together already. The back of the helm is always tricky. There's that little bit of peaks. So you have to raise it a little bit more to get that to, to squish in. Now inside my shop, I use an oxypropane torch with a rosebud tip. I just like to heat up that metal, anneals it, and then I like to work it as quickly as possible while it's hot, just over the ball stake again raising it. So I'm actually never compressing the metal directly against the stake. I've got the center of the stake sitting just off of where my hammer blows are so that you're pushing the metal down towards the stake but you're never squishing it between the hammer and the stake. When you're raising a helmet like this, I like to start at the ear and kind of work my way up and around to the top of the head and front and back in successive passes. With each pass, you can kind of push the metal a little bit further down. What you're essentially doing is thickening up at the edges as you move up the helm. Again, the back of the head there is always a little bit tricky. It requires a lot of uh, squishing that metal together, so it required quite a few heats. Here I am just doing a rough comparison of the two halves. just want to get them approximately the same shape so you can clamp them together. 
I cut some templates of exactly what I wanted the finished helmet to look like out of wood. Here I am just using a plastic mallet just to rough out that tail a little bit. And now I'm going to put a crease in one side. This will be the line that runs down the side of the helmet. Doing a bit of planishing here, just smoothing out all those, those bumpy bits. Now this helm, I wanted it to have a fairly rough finish, so I could planish it really far, but in this case I leave it pretty rough from the hammer. Now, now that the one line is on there, I want to match it exactly, so I measure it quite a bit and get the line marked on there so that the second half has the crease in the same spot. I rough in the crease using a weighted rawhide mallet. Then I switch over to a heavy planishing hammer to smooth it out on either side of the crease. So here's a quick test fit of the two halves just to see where it might need to be modified. And before you can do those final tweaks, you kind of have to get the two halves together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them so that they have a finished edge. So back over to the Beverly Shear. And I'm just going to cut these nice and straight. Now this is going to be the center comb. So another piece of 18 gauge. And I am going to be quite aggressively changing this. So the very first thing I do is run it through the bead roller and give it a little uh, crease. And I take it over to a stake and I start hammering away. Quite a few heats and quite a bit of hammering later, it starts to look a little bit like this. You can see the metal kind of flakes off there from all the heat. Now this is just to raise that comb even more, I'm basically heating it up where I want it to bend and then squishing it in the vise, causing it to get taller. Now I'm starting to shape the comb to, the, to match the profile of the helmet, and because my helmet already matches this wood form, I don't have to use the metal shell, I can just use the wood form. Just keep heating and bending. Now what I'm doing is I'm actually creating a little bit of a slope to either side so that comb doesn't come straight out but it actually slopes down into the curvature of the helm. There we go, starting to look like a helmet. Punch a couple of holes in the center here and then I can measure back off of those and now I'm going to work the comb down onto the helmet grabbing a little punch. I don't. I try not to drill when I don't have to and use that punch as much as possible. Now everybody's probably wondering what kind of fasteners those are because a lot of people have never seen them before. And they're called Clico pins and they're a, a sheet metal fastener that allows you to hold things together temporarily and they're amazingly fast. Uh, I definitely recommend them to anyone that uh, wants to get into armoring of any type. So now I'm just trying to flare out this skirt a little bit. I'm using a cross peen hammer here and basically putting a whole bunch of little cross peens in and then hammering them flat. And what that does is it stretches the metal out and causes it to flare out in both directions. I'm working from the inside of the helmet on this crease again, just uh, straightening it up and making it look exactly the way I want it to. Now on the comb, I've got to use a cold chisel that is, is all rounded smooth. And I'm just going to pound it down into that matching crease. Well, now's the big moment where we get to try it on. It's finally starting to look like a helmet. Feels pretty good. We'll get this ocular cut open. Put a little roll on the edge. So far so good. Now let's head over to the bandsaw and cut off the bottom of the skirt. Next, I'm gonna cut this ocular opening. And it's a little bit tight with its with the blade, so I didn't cut all the way. Instead, I got out my air nibbler and just chewed it off with that. Next, I grab my power file and sand that down. 
Now what I'm doing is just marking the roll that I'm going to put on here. I always enjoy doing a roll by hand. It goes faster than it seems like it would. I use a lightweight ball peen hammer that's been modified on both sides. The flat face has been modified to be slightly convex and the back side has been rebated to be a little bit bull nosed. It works very well for doing this type of roll. This completed roll makes the bottom of the helmet very rigid. For sanding, I started with a 120 grit flap disc. Then I switched to the little orbital, worked my way up to 320 grit. After that, I had to cut the nasal of the comb just to accommodate the brass work on the eyebrow. Now I'm gonna give this a quick coat of a paint and primer in a nice Lannister red. Here we are using the bead roller to put the hinges on the front for the folding front face plates. Switching dies a couple of times requires a little bit of work but uh, basically folds it over a wire so you get a, a nice even rounded tube that'll be cut into a hinge. There's a little bit of handwork still involved with this. I'll use my uh, Whitney punch number 16 to punch some 1 8 holes into this hinge before it gets installed onto the helm. Using tape, I actually made a template for the top of the comb, and this will be the template that I use to cut the brass. I like to texture my brass, so I use a, an old hammer that has a scuffed up face, and it creates a nice kind of aged patina on these pieces of brand new brass. Here I am using those Clico pins again, just to hold it in place while I drill out all the holes, mounting these hinges. Now I'm using a metal blackener that uh, gives it a chemical patina to both the brass and the steel. Once it's all cleaned up, I give it a scuff with my favorite Scotch-Brite pads and you can kind of adjust the patina to whatever level you like. Now starting the riveting process. Quite a few rivets in this helm, so using solid brass rivets for the whole thing. The trim is cut from 032 brass and is textured with a hammer, then shaped to fit. I always use a little countersinking bit to take the burr off the back side of any hole I drill. I always like to trim my brass pieces a little bit long so that when I get to the back, there's excess to grind off or sand off. You can see here how much I love using these Clico pins. I used to bolt my armor together with nuts and bolts and it is way faster with those pins. It's a little bit tedious, but it's actually quite fun to assemble this kind of stuff. You just work your way around starting at one end and keeping the brass nice and flush as you work your way to the back. I'm punching some holes in some strips of latigo leather that will get installed around the bottom perimeter of the helmet. I've left some holes that don't get riveted and those are for attaching a removable liner if I ever decide to make one for this helm. So again, these are brass rivets and you can see they're kind of a gray color and it's because I've aged them with a patina before I rivet them. It's often easier to just age a bucket of the rivets in a small amount of patina and then you can polish it off once they've been installed. So they look gray when they go on and then they polish down to a brass color again. So these are the brow pieces and they just need to be trimmed exactly so that it all matches up if there's any discrepancy side to side on your helmet. And this is a trick I've used many times using a painter's tape strips and using them to create a, a curved form. Instead of trying to cut it out of paper, you can just draw it right on your armor whenever you're doing decorative elements. It's a very quick way of getting pieces to fit exactly on a curved surface. I've textured these pieces again, and that always adds a little bit of curve, but wasn't quite enough to match to the helmet. So just do a little bit of hand forming, shape it on there. Using a profile gauge, I can quickly get the exact profile of the outside of the helm so that I can make the crest that goes across the helmet. So here I am with the finished crest pattern, and I'm putting this on a piece of brass that measures 0.70 of an inch thick. 
Now next I'm gonna head over to the scroll saw and I use a blade on here specifically for cutting metal. It's got a few extra teeth on it. You always wanna match your blade to the thickness of the material that you're cutting. I'm gonna clean it up with my one of my favorite tools in the shop, the power file. And now I have to make the little brackets that go onto the crest to hold it onto the helm. I absolutely love doing these parts of the project. They're tiny and they're usually relatively quick from start to finish. So they're really great. Just make them up as you go along and it's kind of something that you know is coming but you don't know exactly what it's going to be like until you get to that piece and then it always seems to work out. and It adds a lot of detail, those little tiny things. The little brackets that I just made will be mounted on the back of the crest. So I've got to punch some holes for the rivets to go through. After that, I'll grab my texture hammer and I'll add a texture to the entire piece. This always creates a bit of a curve, so I'll pound that out using the rawhide mallet, leaving just an ever so slight bit of curve so that the crest has a bit of life to it. It's not just dead flat. From the front, I want these rivets to be near invisible. So I countersink them a little bit and then we're gonna flush rivet them in. And I'm going to cut the rivets quite short and then pound them down so they're flush with the face of the brass. And then I'll use my little air sander and just nip the top of those off so they're absolutely flush. Once that's all done and cleaned up, I'll have to add the texture back on using my little texture hammer again. Now back onto the chemical patina. And once it's all cleaned up, scrub it back to the point where I want it to be. Drill the mounting holes and the helmet comes apart one last time. This is a piece of lambskin and what I've done is I've put some leather cement on it and I'm putting a string inside. This will be used to create a decorative black and soft edge at the top of the ocular. I always like to do a soft edge above the bridge of the nose because it's the most likely place that if the helmet shifts that's where it's going to touch the actor's face. Mark some holes. Again that's for the liner that might be installed at some other time. So now we have this completed edge that will protect the actor somewhat in the event of an accident. Now I finally get to rivet this helmet together. So starting at the top center, one rivet at a time. Quite a satisfying little task. I'm cutting some cheek pieces out from a piece of five ounce vegetan leather and just use a little edge beveler to take the edges down, smooth it out. Now I'm using some black alcohol dye and I always like to back roll things like this just to give it a little bit of patina. Once it's dry I like to put a little tan coat on just to seal in the dye and now I'm gonna finish off these last couple rivets. So I was talking about earlier that brass being a little bit long so that you can trim it nice and flush. Let's trim up this leather inside. I always like to do a slight adjustment to the aging and patina after it's all fully assembled. That way you can highlight those rivets and leave the darkening where it needs to be. When I laid this out, I intended that the rivets to be used for the crest would also do double duty to hold the cheek flaps to, together. And now it's time to do the faceplate. So again, back to my paper templates. Get it all bolted together there, drill the eyes on. Cut it out with my electric shear. Back to the Beverly shear, get the brass all trimmed up. For this faceplate, I decided that I would hand roll the hinges. It's a process that takes a little bit of getting used to, but it's not actually that difficult. It's about the same amount of work as doing it on the bead roller, and it's a lot more satisfying. So you can see I'm using a piece of wire that I will use as the finished hinge pin, and a variety of different holding techniques to just get that shape right. And using a hacksaw, I just cut the hinges, and I cut them always a little bit shy of where they should be so that we can do a little bit of fine tuning with the file. Using a jewelry saw just finishes those off and then mounted in my vise is my favorite little power file. Getting this exactly right is a little bit tricky. There's a lot of back and forth 
with a file and marking and filing. You can see I put a piece of tape on my file to protect surfaces that I don't want to file. Now it's finally all fit and it's nice and snug. There we go, ready for cutting out. Using a jewelry saw is one of the only ways to do this kind of pierce work. It's pretty fast once you get the hang of it. Now for the small holes I had to drill them out with my Fordham and then over to my punch to get some of these larger holes, punching eighth inch. Just enough to get in and maneuver around with the jewelry saw. It's always important to use the right size blade. For this brass I was using an 81 tooth per inch blade. I like to cut with the jewelry saw in a single layer. When it comes to filing, I like to layer them together so that I can match them exactly. Now for a quick cleanup using my little air sander and making sure to soften all the edges on the brass. Quick chemical patina and a little bit of hand shaping before it's ready for that final installation. This time I'll put the pins in from the top with a little bit of a mushroomed head on the top. Trim them off and then peen the bottom of them so they're finally assembled. Now the ever important step of putting on my maker's mark. I hope you've enjoyed watching this as much as I enjoyed building it. Please like and subscribe and share it with your friends on social media.